We met a man once. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, how you doing, partner? Hey, not too bad, not too bad. How you doing? Mm, not too bad, just trying to get this weight off my shoulder. Need some help there? Yeah, I'm all right, but I appreciate the offer. Yeah, all right, all right. Hey, what's your name? I haven't met you before. My name's John. What about yourselves? John O'Toole. Often known as the Pirate Captain, or Captain Blackwater. He was a stubborn old man, but he slowly became a father figure to us. When it came to family matters, you could think of him as a sort of advisor. Our consigliere. He showed us the ways of the American West, and in return, we showed him a little bit of Italy. Can I help you, man? I'm trying to take a leak here. Oh, oh sorry. Hey, my bad. And even though sometimes he didn't really understand why we did things, he knew they had to be done. One of our first robberies was actually masterminded by John. Being part Irish, he proposed to use that accent to throw anyone off that we robbed. For an extra buck around here, hell, we went for it. And while they weren't the best of imitations, it kinda worked. You got a writer? Two of them. <laughs> How you doing, laddie? Make sure you, uh, oh, oh, oh. How you doing, laddie? Don't make me shoot you, man. Don't make me shoot. Make get shoot off your horse. Here. Get off your horse. Get off your horse now, laddie. Pull your gun off. I'll shoot you in your face, eh? What to use? Oh, you All take right. that gun off yourself there, sir. Both of them, hey, both of them, they're racers. Keep your gun strained on them there, folks. I'm going to need to go ahead and get that over to me there, please. You better watch the road ahead. Hey. Any funny business, you'll be losing limbs. Um, please be careful of the horse. I don't kick you right in the face. Oh, and I'm not worried about the horse. Eh? Get both right, the rifles yeah. there, lad. You go ahead, hand over that rifle, whatever that piece is in the holster. I'll take whatever cash you got on you too. Search the mound, they eh? batten down. Now uh, don't you go straying too far there now, love. The law started asking questions about our involvement in the robbery. They kindly even asked us to try our best Irish accent to see if the witness could identify us. You're up to side. <laughs> best of luck, buddy. Sing um, song. Oi there. Mm. Halt your hoofs. Uh, this is this is a robbery. <laughs> it's, it's sing songy. Okay, my turn. <clears throat> uh, get off of your horsey. This is a robbery. Not and a we, musical. God damn it! You said That's sing songy. songy. Yeah, you said songy. They let us go the next day. That man you heard outside, that was Sheriff Moses Maddox. He was commonly known as the Mad Dog. Criminals hated him because he was good at what he did. No fucks given. He'd have you shot in public and your body dragged away into an empty grave. He caught a cannibal once, and he put a hell of a show on for the people of Valentine. Is the cannibal? Yep, he's the cannibal serial killer. You're getting off Be easy. the road, dead man walking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do not want to make this a habit. But, tonight, I had banished James Mudd to Armadillo. After all of the problems he had been causing up in here. So I decided, it's since I don't true. trust him, yep. that I would go and check on him to see if he was in Armadillo. As I was leaving the saloon in that collar-ridden cesspool, this man walked in, and from behind, I did think it was James, and I was proud for a moment like a father. However, once I called out the man's name, he turned and said he was a bishop. The Bishop of Armadillo. And I asked this gentleman of which you see before you now if he had seen a man such as James. 250 pounds, rotund, the ground wobbled when he walked. This man said he had not seen a man of that kind of stature. Instead, he wanted to tell me all about his church, the church, Catholic church, he said, 
Now his story started to unravel quite quickly. And upon arriving in that general area of that burnt down decrepit church, he did say that there were pits, mass graves in the back of this church that were not just filled with cholera victims, but those who did not believe in their ways. He said it was the priests at first who killed these men, but he said he was the bishop, thus the leader of them. He then later said that no, it was he who killed 27 men and women Jesus Christ. who did not believe in his cause. <sighs> With his crime so heinous and believing that he cannot be killed, believing that he is the bringer of death, the descendant of hate, the judge, jury, and executioner of the gates of hell himself, as a genocidal mass murderer, the crime and punishment is death. By the authority invested in me by the state of Saints Crossing, I, Sheriff Moses Maddox, for two days in a row, do send another soul to meet their eternity. Chavez, aim. See? No, I can't watch. Do you have any final words to say, Logan? Fire. The criminal world was a life or death kind of thing. Go, 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 go. But rumors quickly spread across the state of a notorious gang known as the Lang Gang. Everything they did made the headlines on the Saints Daily newspaper. So we thought, why not make some sort of business arrangement with these wise guys? Being outlaws and on the state's most wanted list, finding them was going to be uh, difficult. Rumor had it they operated near the saloon in Saint Denis. Alright, we're gonna go in, we're gonna go in quietly, door by door, okay? We see anybody, you immediately tie them up. Everybody got lassos? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Anybody, anybody's in there, gets tied up immediately. We're gonna clear the first, the second floor first, and then we're gonna go down. We're gonna go down one by one, all in single file, okay? Clear out the entire place. Once we have the place secure, we can go back to talking out loud, and, um, and we'll have the whole facility under control. Are we ready to do this? Let's go, on you. It's empty. Except for this lady who just walked in. Uh, I'm walking away. No, no, no. no come, come back, back come back, right come now. back. Come back inside. Quietly. To the bar. To the bar? Nice and easy. That's the broad we robbed a few weeks back. Maybe she knew something. Unregistered blast mining was illegal in these times, but if you did it right and played it smart, you could avoid having to pay the government a hefty tax fee. That's where we came in. John found us the local contacts for an untapped gold vein, and we knew the Lang Gang had access to dynamite. It was a clear path to loads and loads of dough. Tax free. Sonny was lucky enough to run into Chavez, who was now a member of the Lang Gang. Remember him? There he was, living the life of an outlaw. Word quickly got out that we were looking for these guys. We set up a meeting in Armadillo. All right, senores and senoras. Hey, Chavez. Hola, so, hey, all bro. right. Wait a little Ciao. Way. Before I say anything else, I do want to apologize for Becker. He's an old goddamn fucking snail. Keep my little late. And I just realized what time it is. No this shit. He takes a sweet ass time, amigos. I do want to apologize on my part, on him. I didn't expect this gonna be this late. So hopefully, hopefully all of you expect my apology and I'll be waiting for the apology. Sorry about the delay. I was coming from the mountains and there was an incident, but uh, it's good everyone finally made it. I know this is something he was trying to set up for a while, is what my boys tell me. 
Pleasure to meet you, Dicenzo boys. Becker John Lang at your service. What can I do you for? We wanted to see if there's some way we could maybe possibly help each other out here because you see, we're capable people, we're business savvy, but most importantly, the law don't really know about us. We, te we tend to keep things very, you know, clandestine, underground. We're, we're very sociable in that sense, but people don't really know what kind of business we're in. Whereas opposed you and your crew, uh, you guys are all over the fucking news. You guys probably can't even walk into Valentine without getting shot on the spot. So that being said, we have our pros. You have your cons in that sense. Maybe there's something we can do for each other. So um, we're here to kind of extend an offer, kind of a, maybe an agree in, uh, ag agreement to an alliance or something like that. We can work together and solve problems in union without fighting amongst ourselves. Now, this is something we might be able to use. Definitely. I understand why you're trying to pitch such an offer. But I can't help but wonder what she was thinking you might need us to do. I heard it from the sheriff, Mr. Maddox, okay? That you have your hands on some military-grade explosives. Maybe we do. What's that to a fine group of fellas like yourself? Ah, uh, well, because our business is booming, Mr. Mr. Lang, and, and, you know, nothing makes a good boom as a stick of dynamite. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then, here's what I think. Yeah, I think there is a future between us. And yeah, I think we got something going on. But right now, my hands are tied. And all I can say... Well, all I can do... is ask you one simple question. What's that? Do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> Aaron, you're on away, friend. Oh, shit. <laughs>